Good. She was a cerebral terrorist hijacking my thoughts and my subconscious. Because with every simultaneous glance that we shared, I was growing increasingly nauseous. She was spectacular, immaculate, and not to mention sexy. But I guess she was put here on purpose, simply just to perplex me. I joked to myself she was sent by the devil just to test me. Because if so, she would be one of hell's angels that I would have to ask to bless me. And as the night dragged on, I began to refer to her as my double scoop of sand. Because I could literally feel her slipping between my fingers, between the palms of my hands. So I held them tighter and closed my eyes and began to pray. Please, God, please, could you send her over my way? <laughs> and if you do, I'd be oh so grateful. I'll be in church in the front row center just to show you how much I'm thankful. <laughs> and as I opened my eyes, my ears were blessed with pure magic. The thought of a voice this angelic night in heaven was nothing short of tragic. The air that carried her voice was as crisp as the tail end of a summer's breeze. This was the most beautiful woman that I had ever seen, and I was about to freeze. But not this time, I told myself, I can't let this one get away. Because if I did, to be honest, it would ruin my whole damn day. <laughs> my week. <laughs> I leaned in with a simple obligation to tell her my name and returned with the discovery that the greatest smell on earth had abruptly changed. And once we made eye contact, I instantly thought of a book entitled 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea because that's how deep and focused her eyes appeared and were fixated on me. The words she spoke top off her lips like white rabbits and had a gentle flow. And she became my Alice and I was lost in this wonderland of a conversation. Before long, I began to wonder how deep this rabbit hole would go. <laughs> I didn't want to admit it, but I had to confess, Mrs. Gully was my hypothesis, you know, an educated guess. She started talking about random things and common interests she shared. She started asking questions about me, and I couldn't believe that she cared. I told her I write poetry sometimes, then she giggled. I told her I don't write poetry in that touchy Philly kind of way, but that I want the words in my poems to touch you and make your skin crawl so you can literally feel what I'm trying to say. <laughs> and in her eyes, she started working on a book entitled 40,000 Leagues Under the Sea, and I was the main attraction. If I can describe this girl to you in one word, it plain and simply be satisfaction. <laughs> because she can satisfy me each and every way imaginable. And the way I felt about her was nothing short of insatiable. And if insatiable means to never get enough of and have an infinite fill, and she was my satisfaction, then this journey we was about to embark on was going to be one hell of a thrill. <laughs> because there was going to be a limitless amount of her infinite satisfaction. And I couldn't wait to get her alone so I could put this theory in action. <laughs> Growing up as a kid was Gillian's Island, so I started laughing. I told her she could be Marianne or Ginger just as long as I get to be the captain. <laughs> so we can get stranded on the island of my choice and eat fruit made entirely of passion. With a theme song orchestrated by her voice and her organ as I gently placed my sweet scented tulips upon her base. So the secret ingredient of the fruit we partook could be exposed by a quickly written all over her face. And then we get some messages and bottles made of cell phones punctuated with smiley faces. Before long, she referred to my bedroom and her personal and private oasis. As you can see, I was developing the heart of a lion. I had the eyes of a locked-in bangle. I had to tell her my new destination was getting lost in her Bermuda Triangle. <laughs> <laughs> and if I shouted it loud, it wouldn't suck. It wouldn't matter who heard it. Because if I crossed the line between smooth and perverted, it wouldn't matter to her because she's just my dream, my dream girl. She's just my midnight hallucination. She would never be more than me just just fit me from my outrageous imagination. So ladies, if this poem touched you in any way, I have a proclamation. <laughs> Dream Girl is vacant, and I'm accepting all applications. <laughs>